A Point of Detail by Sapper Read by Jonathan Firth Hist! The officer gripped the sergeant's arm just above the elbow, bringing his mouth close up to his ear. Don't move. The words were hardly breathed, so low was the tense, sudden whisper, and the two men crouched motionless, peering into the darkness which enveloped them. Where, sir? The sergeant slowly twisted his head till it was almost touching that of the man beside him, and he too, whose normal voice resembled a human foghorn, scarcely did more than frame the words with his lips. Behind that mound of chalk, several of them. The sergeant's eyes followed the line of the outstretched hand until they picked up the dark, menacing lump in the ground twenty feet away. Somber, grim, apparently lifeless, outlined against the night sky, it appeared almost monstrous in size to the men who lay on the edge of the shell hole, with every nerve alert. A bullet spat over them viciously, but they did not alter their position. They knew they were not the target, and from their own lines came the sudden clang of a shovel. All around them the night was full of vague, indefinable noises. Instinctively a man, brought suddenly into such a place, and ignorant of his whereabouts, would have known that there were men all around him. Men whom he could not see, men who flitted through the shadows, bent on mysterious tasks, men who moved silently with eyes strained to pierce the darkness. Behind the German lines, a trench tramway was in use. The metallic rumble of the trolleys on the iron rails came continuously from the distance. And suddenly, from close at hand, a man laughed. Do you see them? Once again the officer was whispering, while he still grasped, almost unconsciously, the sergeant's arm. There, there, look. Two or three shadowy blobs seemed to move uncertainly above the edge of the chalk mound, and then disappear again. And a moment afterwards, from almost on top of them, came a hoarse, guttural whisper. The officer's grip tightened convulsively. The night of a sudden seemed alive with men close to them, pressing around them. Almost involuntarily, he got up and moved back a few steps, still peering, straining to see in the inky blackness. Something loomed up and bumped into him, only to recoil with a muttered oath. And even as he realized it was a German, he heard his sergeant's low voice from a few feet away. Where are you, sir? Where are you? The next moment he was back at his side. Get back your own way, he whispered. We bumped a big patrol. Don't fire. And as he spoke, with a slight hiss, a flare shot up into the night. Now, had it not been for that one untimely flare, this story would never have been written. Indecent curiosity in other wanderers' doings in no man's land is an unprofitable amusement, while the sound of strafing, to say nothing of revolver shots, is calculated to produce a tornado of fire from all directions, administered impartially by friend and foe alike. Wherefore, it is more than likely that but for the sudden ghostly light, both the Englishmen would have got away. As it was, John Brinton, M.C., lieutenant in His Majesty's Regiment of the Royal Loamshires, found himself crouching in a slight dip in the ground and contemplating from a range of four feet no fewer than six Huns similarly engaged. There was the sharp crack of a revolver, a struggle, a muffled cry, then silence. Half a dozen more flares went up from each line. Everywhere centuries peered earnestly towards the sound of the shot. A few desultory rifles cracked, and then the night resumed its whispering mystery. But at the bottom of the dip, five Huns lay on the top of a stunned English officer, while the sixth lay still and twisted with a revolver bullet in his brain.